Tony T called the guys and told them the audition was canceled. So when I got there, the place was empty. It was just me and him. So he says, oh, they must be caught in traffic or something, and offers me a drink while we're waiting, and right then, just that quick, I felt it. The truth of it. I trying to play headliner. God trying to play Paris. The whole truth of it. Tony kept saying he could look out for me, offer me some protection in these hard times. <laughs> he didn't want a singer any more than you do. He wanted to keep a colored woman stashed up in Harlem somewhere so he could come by every now and then and rub her head for luck. Oh, no Negro woman, no Negro woman should not do anything! And so what? Do you even understand what I'm talking about? When I was sitting at Tony's this afternoon, I saw him looking at me like he could see right through my clothes. And I knew he had talked to Nick about me. Oh, I didn't have to imagine what they said. I've heard them talk about women. I know what they say, but I wasn't going to let myself think about that. Oh, I was just right on out of my head because I know how to take care of myself. I'm not going to be some poor old woman begging up and down 20 to the 25th Street dreaming of fine clothes and French champagne. So I drank with him, and I listened to him tell me about how long he'd been wanting to get to know me better. <laughs> and I watched him put his hand on my knee like I wouldn't notice, and I pretended not to. <laughs> and I laughed. <laughs> about. When I turned around, there was Tony, waiting for his answer. So I gave it to him.